Project X-Ray. Project X-Ray seemed like an out there idea, but the Bat Bomb BB had the potential to cause far more devastation than the atomic devices dropped on Japan. The BB contained hundreds of bats harvested from New Mexico, each one laden with a napalm-like incendiary device. The plan was to release the bats at dawn over Japanese cities, which were made almost entirely of wood and paper. The bats would disperse up to 40 miles away and roost under the eaves of Japanese buildings. A few hours later, the devices would go off, setting huge swaths of Japan ablaze. Testing showed the BB to be incredibly effective, but the device was conceived too late in the conflict to see action before Little Boy and Fat Man drop. Exit 29 Oikwa Standing for Objective Individual Combat Weapon, the XM-29 Oikwa was part of an endeavor to improve on existing combat devices. The machine looked like something out of a futuristic war video game. In addition to having all the capabilities of a standard assault rifle, it included a semi-automatic six-round grenade launcher. The XM-29 Oikwa could also be taken apart and used as two separate entities, if ever necessary, on the battlefield. However, the main drawback was that it was extremely bulky and difficult to handle. Operations for XM-29 Oikwa have since been shut down. SAR Bomba Hydrogen Device How does one describe the most powerful man-made explosion in history Russia's 50 megaton SAR Bomba? All right, imagine a piece of the sun about two. Two miles in diameter suddenly appearing overhead. Now, imagine that two-mile fusion fireball itself bigger than the whole blast radius of Little Boy suddenly explodes, releasing all of its energy and simply vaporizing everything in a 20-mile radius. That's the entire city of London, turned into ash. Everything within 50 miles perishes within hours, and within 100 miles a couple of days later. The mushroom cloud could be seen from 100 miles away, and the fallout could spread from New York to Colorado. The Tsar Bomba was never so much a weapon as it was a statement to the West, beware the power of Mother Russia. Owing Sikorsky RAH-66 Comanche In 1983, Engineers at Boeing Sikorsky began development of the RAH-66 Comanche as a means to replace Vietnam-era helicopters. Comanche boasted some pretty bold features that would have made it an impressive machine had it came to be. With a body composed out of radar-absorbing material, the Comanche was 43 feet long and could fly up to 201 miles per hour. It also had state-of-the-art navigation systems and the capacity to carry up to 12 Stinger projectiles. So, what happened? A string of bureaucratic nightmares slowed down production over the years, eventually leading to the project being altogether abandoned after the government poured billion into the machine. It took six years for the Army to issue a request for proposals and then an additional three years to draft a development contract. Owing Sikorsky took an additional nine years to even begin the manufacturing phase in 2000, while the company produced two prototypes in the following two years, the government axed the project before mass production could begin. Why did the government shut things down when the company was finally ready to mass produce the Comanche? The process took so long as is typical when dealing with massive bureaucracies such as the government, private companies, and the U.S. Army, that things had changed significantly. Since the project's original inception, the Army's needs had evolved. The RAH-66 Comanche was simply no longer what the government wanted. 
Japanese I-400 aircraft carrying submarine. The I-400 is not the only submarine ever to carry aircraft inside, but it was the first. This secret advantage of the Japanese Navy in WW2 was originally conceived by Admiral Yamamoto, who saw this stealth machine as Japan's only hope of hitting the United States or the Panama Canal. It carried three sarin planes armed with either incendiary devices or anti-ship projectiles, and used a unique side-by-side -side double hull to keep from tipping over with the weight of the aircraft hangar on top. Space Marines Sustain Project Hot Eagle was first proposed in 2002 as a variation on Spaceship One, suborbital air-launched space plane. The small unit space transport and insertion sustain orbiter and its 13 space marines would be carried to high altitude on the belly of an even more bizarre looking mothership called White Knight. It would use its rocket booster to fly into low orbit. There, it could either hang out for a few hours awaiting the right time to strike or fly to the other side of the planet in less than an hour. One class Ekranoplan. When it was first spotted by aerial surveillance, intelligence personnel believed the Caspian Sea Monster to be an unfinished high-altitude bomber with missing wings. But the Russian Ekranoplan ground effect sea skimmer was as fully functional as the Death Star. Like the SLAM, this nuclear bomber was designed to fly under the radar and deliver its massive 100-ton payload of projectiles before the U.S. Strategic Command had the chance to respond. That's the stealth and hitting power of a large nuclear submarine with the speed of a jet airliner. Ekranoplans don't actually fly their ground effect vehicles, riding on a cushion of compressed air trapped between the ground and their stubby wings. The Russian Navy actually did use it through the 1990s as a transport vessel. Good thing for us, since a single Ekranoplan would have carried more than enough nuclear ordnance to destroy every major city on the East Coast. XB-70 Valkyrie Back in the 1960s, the Air Force was in the market for a B-52 replacement capable of penetrating deep into enemy airspace without getting shot down by interceptors. The Valkyrie would have used a unique compression lift body and tons of power to sustain Mach 3 at 70,000 feet. Its frontal view would have also made it difficult to spot on the radar in time to scramble fighters. Apart from massive budget overruns and a new focus on slimming down the military, the Valkyrie was ultimately done in by the newest generation of ultra-fast surface-to-air projectiles, which rendered the Valkyrie's speed of little use. Slam Regular items have one major problem, they are easy to detect once launched and leave the enemy plenty of time to shoot back. Any launch would essentially leave those who initiated the launch vulnerable, which is exactly what kept either side of the Cold War from firing. The SLAM supersonic low-altitude missile would have gotten around that by flying at Mach 4 below the enemy radar by using its nuclear-powered jet engine to travel, while irradiating everything it flew over. Essentially, it could level buildings with the sheer force of its supersonic shockwave. The SLAM's ability to strike without warning would have undone the mutually assured destruction policy and almost inevitably driven the world toward annihilation. Rather than a nuclear deterrent, the SLAM was a nuclear provocation, which is the primary reason it never officially entered service. F-22 Raptor The million machine, that is the F-22 Raptor has never once in its 25-year history fired a shot in anger. 
the world's first fifth generation fighter has yet to find a target deserving of risking its expensive hide, especially since the Soviet Union collapsed. True, there are other fifth gen fighters out there, but they are all still playing catch up to the F 22 in terms of design and performance. Lockheed won't be making any new F-22s for the foreseeable future. You could call that a shame, but as long as we're not using it, that means we're not at war with anyone dangerous enough. Excalibur Space Laser Otherwise known as the project that bankrupted the Soviet Union, this space laser was at the heart of the 1984 Star Wars program touted by Ronald Reagan. It harnesses the power of a small nuclear blast to create a concentrated dose of X-ray or infrared energy at the Earth. That might sound like a Dr. Evil Doomsday device, but this laser was meant to prevent doomsday for the United States. It was designed as part of a projectile defense system and would have been used to shoot down incoming icons while they were near orbit themselves. Technical problems, as well as the inability to target multiple warheads, kept this one from becoming a reality, but we could easily do it with modern technology. The Air Force is already working with airplane-mounted laser cannons to do exactly the same thing. Port HO-229 Bat. No, that's not a B-2 Spirit stealth bomber, it's the German wonder weapon that inspired it. The Bat wasn't just incredibly fast and futuristic, it was the world's first purpose-built stealth aircraft. Most historians agree that the conflict could have gone very differently, if the bat had actually entered service earlier, not least of which because of its planned big brother. The America bomber would have been capable of reaching New York or Washington from bases in Germany, slipping under our radar, dropping a few tons of explosive devices, and returning without refueling. The original bat, though, would have been more than sufficient to rain havoc all over Europe, Russia, and England with near impunity. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and likes and comments down below and also thank you so much for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video then. Take care. Bye.